Hello and welcome everyone to our final day of DrupalCon North America 2021. I'm Tiffany Ferris, CEO of Palantir.net and a board member of the Drupal Association. As I join you here today, it reminds me of 10 years ago when I co-chaired DrupalCon Chicago. We came together to celebrate Drupal 7 and Drupal's 10th anniversary. It was highlighted by this huge party at the Field Museum where we recognized some of Drupal's first 100 contributors. It seems pretty far away from now. Obviously, this DrupalCon has been different by necessity, but we're also pretty different by choice. The Drupal Project, the Drupal Association, and the Drupal community have all grown and evolved. We're continuously learning, iterating, and innovating. We come together online and in person when we can on a mission to create software that's easy, accessible, and safe for everyone to both contribute to and use. As we head into this, our final day of DrupalCon, we hope that you've enjoyed the programming and our emphasis on the strategic initiatives of the project. Whether you were one of those first 100 contributors or you were with us back at DrupalCon Chicago, or this is your first DrupalCon, welcome. You are in the right place, and we're really glad that you're here. Following today's keynote, you'll have the opportunity to join the leads in a session room for a dedicated Q&A session. So please save your questions until then. You can also find a link to access cart captioning pinned in the chat. In addition to this session, there are a select number of sessions highlighted throughout the day that relate to initiatives. So be sure to check out those and join um, some of the mentored contribution sessions from 1500 to 1900 hours today. And with that, it is my pleasure to welcome the ambassadors of the Drupal 10 Readiness Initiative to the SAGE. So welcome to this presentation, Lowry Escala, Gabor Hoichi, and Kristen Pohl. Hi, everyone. Hey, thank you, Tiffany. Hi, everyone. So we are going to talk about the Drupal 10 Readiness Initiative. And we are? Uh, Laure Escola. I'm a Drupal Frontend Framework Manager and a Staff Software Engineer at Acquia. And? I'm Kristen. I'm in California and been doing Drupal since 2004 and found out today is my official 17th Drupal.org anniversary. Wow, congrats, Kristen. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't know that. OK, great. Um, and I am Gabor Hoichi. I work as a Drupal Core Initiative Coordinator, coordinator, not a typo, um, at Acquia. Uh, and I help coordinate various initiatives. And although we are representing this initiative and this keynote, there are a lot more of our team at DrupalCon. So you will find Jess XJM, the Drupal, one of the Drupal Core Release Managers working on Drupal 10 at DrupalCon. You will find Peter Weber working on uh, CK Editor 5, Ben Mullins working on jQuery UI and jQuery. You will find Matt Glaman um, around as working on PHP stand Drupal and Drupal Check. You will find Offer Shaw working on Drupal Rector. And you will find Chris Dark, uh, our mentor, mentor lead. So there's a lot of people working on Drupal 10 at this conference. There's even more people working on Drupal 10 who uh, could not be here for whatever reason. So we'd like to thank their contributions. We could sit here all day and read out their names and their accomplishments. Uh, there's a lot of things that we've already done, and there's a lot of things still to be done. So our deepest thanks to their contributions um, and we hope to meet each other sooner than later in person. So as for the structure of this talk, first we will talk about the timeline, the way towards Drupal 10, what to expect, what, what to expect from Drupal 10. Then the transition, how we will get to Drupal 10 from where you are right now. Then all the tools that support us in this process and how we are improving the tools that some of you may already know and some of you will need to learn about uh, right now because uh, of the Drupal 8 end of life, as we'll talk about. Then we decided to highlight two specific areas of Drupal 10, even though there are a lot that we could talk about. So we'll highlight the starter kit theme creation tool set, and we will highlight Seek Editor 5. I think both of them are pretty exciting. And then finally, we will uh, dive into different areas that you can get involved and where each, where each topic is looking for more contributors. So let's start with the timeline. 
So when is Drupal 10 expected and why? So first of all, what is Drupal 10? Drupal 10 will be a refined version of Drupal 9. So this is very similar to how we did Drupal 8 to 9. Drupal 10 will be very similar to Drupal 9, including all of the goodies from all the initiatives. So it will include Olivero, will include Claro, it will include the all the work from the automated updates initiative, box mesh. It will include all the work from easy out of the box and the coupled menus and the project browser if we have some, if we have one in time. So it will include uh, all of the results from all the work that the community put in. The Drupal 10 readiness initiative is not about overseeing all of these different things that are being built for Drupal. The Drupal 10 readiness initiative is about building the required things for Drupal 10 to be possible. So uh, Drupal 10 will include all of these features and we are focusing on making the Drupal 10 release itself happen. So one great example I think of how Drupal 9 and 10 will be different is the Olivero and the Claro themes. So we have the Olivero theme, this is a new, is a new front end theme and the Claro theme as the new back end theme, both in Drupal 9 now they are not stable yet, neither of them are stable yet, but what we hope to have in later Drupal 9 versions is to stabilize them. So we have a stable Olivero theme and the stable Claro backend theme. And in Drupal 10, the change is, the plan the change is, that the Olivero becomes the new default front end theme of Drupal. So when you install the standard profile, then it will look, it will use Olivero and Claro will be the default backend theme. So that's the plan for Drupal 10. So the only change for these between Drupal 9 and 10 is that we are making these the default. And also we are gonna remove the current default theme, Bardic, and we're gonna remove the current backend theme, 7. So that's the plan, refining what we have in Drupal 9, removing the, the deprecated parts, the old things that we don't want to have anymore in core and making the new experiences, the default experiences, both in terms of the user interface and in terms of the backend APIs. Um, the same thing goes for backend developments. For example, we built PHP 8 support in Drupal 9 and we released that. We already support PHP 8 in Drupal 9 and we already support Composer 2 in Drupal 9. But with Drupal 10, we're gonna remove support for PHP 7 because it goes end of life uh, next year. So. These are, the, the, this, this, these are the changes between Drupal 9 and 10, and these are the changes that we are managing as part of this initiative. So what makes us uh, required to release Drupal 10 is uh, primarily all of the dependencies that we have that are going end of life. So Drupal 9 depends on Symfony 4 that goes end of life November 2023, which is when Drupal 9 will go end of life as well. Uh, CK Editor 4 goes end of life also sometime in 2023. PHP 7 already goes end of life next year. And jQuery UI is already end of life uh, right now. So we depend on a bunch of these third party projects and we need to adhere to their release schedules. So we need to update from Symfony 4 at least to Symfony 5. We are very close to complete with this area. Uh, so we could switch to Symfony 5 um, um, very soon and Drupal 10 when we open the branch. Uh, we hope to switch to Symfony 6 to allow for a longer timeline for Drupal 10 going forward. And we're already working on all of these other dependency updates as well, so we can do them in time. And these are one of the focus areas of the Drupal 10 readiness initiative. So because all of these third-party dependencies go end of life in 2023 latest. We plan to release Drupal 10 middle of next year, June 2022. If that doesn't work out, then we have a fallback date in August. And if that doesn't work out, we have a fallback date in December. I think we worked out a pretty good process with the Drupal 9 release where we can, we can uh, make sure to to uh, focus on the areas that we need to focus on for a timely release. So I hope that we're gonna make the first date, but there's no promises that we will make the first date. So sometime next year is the release date for Drupal 10 as early as the middle of next year. It's coming very soon. 
So the next question is, do I think that this is too soon? I don't think so. If you look at the Drupal, uh, Drupal's history in general, the first 10 years, Drupal had seven major releases. And the reason that could have happened is because the changes were much more controllable. It was easier to adopt the new major versions. And then the next uh, 10 years, we've had two more major versions, and the version changes were much harder. So now, as we are adopting a much easier update, update schedule, this is going to improve a lot. So our plan timeline is Drupal 8 end of life later this year. So if you're using Drupal 8, you need to update to Drupal 9. And then the Drupal 10 release alongside Drupal 9.4 release um, is planned for June 2022 with fallback dates for Drupal 10. And then the Drupal 9 end of life is November 2023. The end of life for Drupal 10 will depend on support for the dependencies that we are updating to. So we'll see when we get there. Uh, we don't have more content about the jQuery and the jQuery UI transition as part of this session. So if you're looking for more details on that, then Ben Mullins is going to present about that later today in Drupal 10 modernizing core JavaScript and removing jQuery. So uh, go there. If you are using Drupal 7, which as probably a lot of you, at least in, in, in a few sites, I'm using Drupal 7 on my site as well. I need to uh, take care of that. Then Drew Weber will talk about who cares about Drupal 7 um, later today as well. And uh, you will see that there's a transition path from uh, Drupal 7 to Drupal 10 as well. So let's talk about the transition. Will this be a hard one? Uh, is, it, is it too soon to? endure another hard transition. We will use the same technique that we use for transitioning from Drupal 8 to 9. So basically, you need to keep your site up to date. You need to keep updated with your contributed projects. And we've introduced a way in uh, Drupal 8 to be uh, uh, compatible with both Drupal 8 and 9 for contributed projects. So we keep supporting that functionality. So now contributed projects are able to be compatible with both Drupal 9 and Drupal 10. So if you keep your contributed project up to date and Drupal core up to date, then you will gradually transition towards Drupal 10 as part of that process. You need to fix your own custom code for uses of deprecated code for old code that we are not supporting anymore next year from Drupal 10 onwards. And when all of these components are done, then you can upgrade core when you are ready. And I reached out to um, Ashish to share uh, share with us a case study about their upgrade experience from Drupal 7 to 8 and 8 to 9, and how was that different. And so that gives us some indication of how we're going to do this from 9 to 10. So let's hear about that. Hello, Drupal North America. I'm Ashish. I work as a Drupal technical architect with QD42. I would like to share our Drupal and upgrade experience. We have upgraded our QD42 website to Drupal 9. In fact, we did that upgrade on the same day when Drupal and but release. I remember Driss in his keynote at Drupal Concept App said, Drupal 9 will be the fastest upgrade ever. We wanted to try that out, so we upgraded our website to Drupal 9. Before jumping into our Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 upgrade story, I would like to give a quick glimpse around our Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 upgrade, which we did for the same site. Our website had around 50 to 100 modules, 5 custom modules, and 1 theme. So it took us around 300 plus persons hour to upgrade our Drupal 7 website to Drupal 8. But why we got so much time to upgrade our Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 website? And the reason is known to everyone. Drupal 8 is a big leap into Drupal ecosystem. So we had to rewrite all our Drupal 7 modules to Drupal 8. We had to rewrite our Drupal theme, as well as support some of the contributed models as well. But if I compare this statistics with Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 upgrade, it just completed in 20% of time, which it took from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 upgrade. So it was very fast to upgrade ever. What we did to upgrade our website to Drupal 8 to Drupal 9, we just followed four simple steps. Step one is to identify the deprecation within our custom and contributed module. We have used upgrade status model to identify all the deprecations within the custom and contributed module. Second step is to upgrade our contributed module. So we have upgraded our, all the contributed module to its latest Drupal and version available. And here I would like to really take opportunity to thank all the Drupal community members who has been contributing into Drupal and readiness initiative so that most of the top modules were readily available to Drupal 9 even before Drupal 9 launch day. Third and the simple step was to update our custom modules. So we took the help of 
Drupal 9 deprecation tools like Drupal Rector, Drupal Check, and this step has been completed very easily with the help of these tools, and it have almost reduced our fifty percent of development time. Fourth and the final step was to upgrade our Drupal core. Some of the developers might face a roadblock here, like we did. We were using the older Composer uh, template system, so we had to upgrade our Composer template to a recommended template one. And after the Composer template upgrade, Drupal core upgrade become very easier. And with this four simple step, we have upgraded our website to Drupal nine. So yeah, so the difference between upgrading from seven to eight and eight to nine uh, could not be uh, more different. Um, if you're looking for more information on this topic, uh, Joao Ventura is sharing Drupal 10 survival manual for developers, agencies, and clients later today as well. So our next topic is tooling. So let's dive a little deeper into the tools that are provided as part of this process and how we are improving them on the way to Drupal 10. And for this, I asked uh, Matt Glamen and Arthur Shaw to provide us a demo of these tools. When you're ready to upgrade your website from Drupal 8 to 9, or later on from Drupal 9 to 10, the recommended way to see what's going on would be using the upgrade status module. This is the display of upgrade status where it would show you a bunch of information and details of if your system is ready for the next Drupal version, if there are some of your modules that should be collaborated with the maintainers of the module because it will check the, the module version on Drupal.org. It will show you which one need to be fixed manually or if you already have modules installed that are compatible with Drupal 9. Under the hood, upgrade status is actually invoking a tool called Drupal Check, which wraps around PHP stand, a static analysis tool for PHP code. You can see here from the output when we run Drupal Check, it scans all the code and reads it for anything that's been marked as deprecated and fetches that deprecation message and returns it into the output. And the upgrade status module parses this data and is used in that form. So in this example here, Unicode string to lower says this is a deprecated method of a certain class. Here's how you fix it. Um, but with this data, you then have to go in and manually fix your code so that way it's no longer executing dep deprecated code. But luckily there's a tool called Rector, which can automate all of this. And there is the Drupal Rector extension, which takes Rector and makes it work against these Drupal deprecations. As you can see here, there are things called Rector rules that say when analyzing code, here's the code signature and convert that to this code signature. So as the first diff shows user load 123 is converted to fetching it from the entity storage. But if there's a more complex use case, such as user load 123 and reset cache, it puts in the code and then puts a to do so that way, you know, like this might need some manual review and verification, right? It's automatically generated code. Not everything is always going to be perfect. The nice thing that we get after having uh, Drupal Rector rules is the Drupal Association helped us creating the Project Update Bot. Project Update Bot is running, I believe, once a week throughout all the modules and all the known deprecations. It analyzes all these modules and it creates issues that display for the module maintainers what needs to be done and if there's already a rector rule available, it creates a patch for the module to be tested and applied to allow that module to be compatible with the next major Drupal version. What's really interesting is on dev.aquia.com, there's a deprecation status page. And this page is actually built from a job that is executed on Drupal.org that takes our entire ecosystem, all modules, and it runs Drupal check against them and I believe upgrade status to find out what needs to be fixed for upgrades. Are there just an info.yaml change that says, great, there's no deprecated code. It just needs to say, yep, I'm okay to be installed. Or are there actual code fixes that need to be made? And this code also runs Rector to find out if any of those code changes could be fixed. So as part of the upgrade bot, it will 
report if that can be fixed or not. And that's what we see in this chart right here. Initially, before the bot was running or Rector was being run, um, we're reporting that things needed manual review because they were reported as using deprecated code. But once we had Drupal Rector running with the Drupal specific Rector rules, you can see we start having everything covered, some things covered. And as the community helps contribute new Drupal Rector rules, we'll see that darker shade of blue, maybe purple, begin to shrink because the tooling can start automatically fixing these as we move forward. Speaking of moving forward, uh, upgrade status is now Drupal 9 compatible as well as Drupal check. That means that you can run these tools on your Drupal 9 site and check for Drupal 10 compatibility of your Drupal 9 site. Drupal Rector needs more help. So Tiffany introduced us from Palantir and uh, they, are, uh, they are sponsors of the Drupal Rector, pro uh, Drupal Rector project. So you can go there and help test out the, up uh, the update that Matt prepared and uh, see if it works for you. And uh, then we can go on and start supporting Drupal 9 and Drupal Rector as well. We're already running uh, the deprecation checking on all of the Drupal 9 compatible projects, more than 5,000 of them. And we found that most of the deprecations we find so far are test methods. And most of them were deprecated in Drupal 8 point something. So they are fixable for Drupal 10 support without sacrificing Drupal 9 support at this point. Uh, I would wait for fixing these manually because it's much better to write the automation first and then we can apply them. So once we have Drupal Rector updated, then we can uh, start writing these rules uh, for automated fixes. Then we can start running the uh, project update bot to produce those patches for projects. And then we can automate the process even better towards Drupal 10. So we're going to use the same tools that you've used for, for 8 to 9. If you have not seen these tools before, you will soon see them because Drupal 8 end of life is later this year. So that's why we decided to uh, cover this uh, tool set as well in this depth in the keynote. So you can learn more today about these topics, uh, the tools to get your site ready for Drupal 9 and 10 from Matt and Offer uh, in their session. And with this, I'm going to hand over to Larry. Yes, I will talk about a new starter kit theme, which is the new custom theme creation tool set replacing Classy. Uh, so Classy is a core team that we use to ship default markup and CSS with some sensible defaults. However, if you look at Classy today and compare it to Classy that shipped with the initial release of Drupal 8, they would be almost identical. The reason for that is that we have to be careful when making changes to Classy because all changes to Classy cause the risk of breaking existing teams that are extending Classy. We have also decided not to do BC breaking changes between major releases in order to make major release upgrades easier. Practically speaking, Classy, Markup, and CSS are frozen at the moment. This has led into a situation where we are shipping known bugs as part of Classy that we are unable to fix because fixing them would require changing frozen Markup or CSS. We are also unable to do any refactoring of markup or CSS since most of it would be considered disruptive. I believe the current process is not ideal because it discourages front-end developers from, from making improvements to the default markup or CSS, as well as forces us to ship known bugs. I believe that in an ideal world, our default markup is something that could be changed easily when needed, and it would match the expectation of uh, front-end developers um, of uh, all skill levels. So in the last couple of years, we have worked on a plan to allow classy markup and CSS to be changed again. One of the planned actions we are taking is that we are going to deprecate classy and replace it with a new starter kit theme. However, even if you're maintaining a team that is extending classy, you don't have to panic. We will continue supporting classy as long as we uh, have a replacement in contrib. Let's take a look at how the starter kit theme uh, compares to the current base theme approach. Here you can see the current approach where the markup is shipped in a base theme. This means that all of the changes from Classy are inherited to the team that is extending Classy. Since we don't want the team to inherit changes to the default markup or CSS, we have created this new process. 
On the right side, you can see how the, how the new approach will look like. Instead of inheriting changes on runtime, the generated team will be forked from the starter kit team at the creation time. This way, we can make changes to the starter kit team without having to worry about the existing teams. We're not planning to remove support for base teams because the, uh, there are valid use cases for that. For example, an internal university based team is one common valid use case for that. The reason the university based team doesn't run into the same issues as Core does is that they have visibility to all of their department teams. This means that when they introduce changes, they can assess the impact of that change. They could even have integration tests that could be run across all departments to assess the impact of the change. The team can be generated using a CLI command. Currently, we pro provide some basic configuration options such as machine name, human readable name, and description. However, in future, this could be extended to more advanced features such as choosing which starter kit team to use as the starting point, or if the generated team should uh, Gener generated team should use PostCSS or other code compilers. In this animation, you can see how simple it is to generate a new team using the starter kit team generator. In the, in the animation, I'm generating a team with a machine name custom underscore team. When the team is generated, the command prints the directory where the team was generated. The generated team currently includes the same markup and CSS as Classy does. However, I hope that in the upcoming releases, we can ship an improved markup in CSS as a starting point for new teams. If you are interested to learn more, I have a session later today at 2 p.m. Eastern time where I will talk about more about the starter kit team and uh, cover the topic generally uh, in more detail. Uh, back to Gabor, we will talk about the CK Editor <laughs> yeah. 5. Yeah. So our next topic is CK Editor 5, which I said we need to update. We are required to update to. So we were required to update to some kind of editor. We chose CK Editor 5 because we have a very good relationship with the team. And to put this into context, CK Editor 4 has been in Drupal Core since November uh, 2015. But CK Editor 4 itself was already three years old at that point. So when they stop supporting it, it's going to be more than a decade old software. And in the front end space, that's uh, really old. So um, I applaud them for supporting it this long. And, um, and um, that's why we are moving on. However, moving on from Secret Editor 4 to 5 is a big move. It's not just a, a simple change. So Secret Editor 5 is a rewrite of Secret Editor 4. This, it has a new approach to how editing works. It has a lot of benefits in the new approach, but we need to work to update to the new approach. So I asked uh, Peter Weber to prepare a demo for us to show this. We've talked about getting Seek Editor 5 in core. So what's the status? There is now a functional project in Contrib. It's still in active development, but you can try it out now. With this module installed, you can enable Seek Editor 5 on a text format. This page now features a new toolbar UI. As well as drag and drop, we built it with accessibility in mind from the start. So it has support for keyboard movement and ARIA live announcements. We included basic text styles such as bold, italic, block quote, and more. CK Editor 5 has many nice UI improvements, which we can use instead of Drupal's dialog for tasks like editing links. You can also insert an image directly. You can either click the upload button to browse or drag and drop directly from your desktop. You can even add multiple images at once. Like links, images have an inline UI for editing alt text or other properties. We created our own custom CK Editor 5 plugin to support Drupal Media. With Media Embed enabled, you can add the Media Library button to the toolbar and browse Drupal Core's Media Library to add any media item directly into the text area. The preview inside CK Editor 5 will match how it will appear when rendered on the page. While viewing a page, enable Quick Edit, click a formatted text field, and you can use Seek Editor 5 to make in-place changes. There are lots of other free plugins provided by Seek Editor 5 that we haven't added yet. Maybe some of these will give you ideas for adding contributed Drupal projects. The Special Characters plugin lets you configure exactly which extra characters your site needs, such as currencies or math formulas. You could add a specific shorthand for any character or phrase, or add a to-do list with checkable boxes. 
CK Source also provides paid services, which offer exciting possibilities, like adding collaborative editing or creating comment threads for users to discuss changes. CK Editor 5 makes it possible to write your own plugins with modern JavaScript, altering, enhancing, or adding entirely new features. One possible use would be to develop components with preset markup and safely editable areas, such as a card with a title and a body. This would let a designer create interesting and on-brand elements that match the site design and empowers content creators to add those elements without needing to edit HTML directly. Another example might be adding a two-column layout right into the body text. Now you have a simple responsive layout that a site builder can add with a click of a button. So what's left? We identified a roadmap, but briefly, we need to finish supporting existing features and add more test coverage. There are also some important areas where we need help with UX and accessibility review. I hope you'll agree that this part of Drupal 10 readiness isn't just a task to complete, but a real opportunity to make Drupal better and improve the site building experience. Yeah, uh, I think it's really exciting. And once again, just to make this clear, we don't plan to add CK Editor 5 direct to Drupal 10. What we are planning is to add CK Editor 5 to Drupal 9 so we can deprecate CK Editor 4. And so contributed projects can update to CK Editor 5 support. So these are features that we plan to add to Drupal 9 later this year. Actually, we need to add to Drupal 9 later this year so that we can release them in Drupal 10 with support in the contributed space as well. So we need more help in this area um, as well. So if you want to learn more about CK Editor transition, Peter Weber is going to have a session later today on that as well. And finally, how to get involved, Kristen. All right, I'm going to talk about how to get involved with the Drupal 10 Readiness Initiative. We've split out our contribution today into several topics that I will go over briefly. But before I do that, I want to reiterate something that we've talked about earlier this week, that contribution to Drupal is not just code. We need help with documentation, manual testing, accessibility, usability, marketing, project management. So contribution is a lot of different areas and all skill levels. So we really want to welcome you no matter where you're at right now. So I'll, I'll briefly go over these, uh, the topics that we're gonna focus on today during the four hour contribution window. We have an eight to nine upgrade where we're gonna be focused on or upgrading modules and themes from Drupal eight to nine. We have another group that's gonna focus on the automated tooling that we learned about earlier for going from nine to 10. We have the CK editor group and they have a lot of JavaScript issues and also a lot of testing. So you can test the CK editor with Drupal core. And also we need help with porting contributed modules that use CK editor four to, to the five version. We have a jQuery and jQuery UI group, and that code is being deprecated and replaced with vanilla JavaScript. So if you're a JavaScript person, that's great. We also need help testing those components. We have the starter kit uh, theme generator, which we heard about. And if you're a front end person, we would love help reviewing that. And also, if even if you're not, we would like help with um, testing out the theme generator itself. Lastly, we have uh, dependencies, all the backend things that we rely on for Drupal, Symfony, Twig, and so forth. And we could use your help trying to make sure that deprecations are handled. So if you go to bit.ly D10 Friday, you will jump to a, a contributions platform that we're leveraging this year. And that has a bit more information about the topic areas that I just covered. If you go to bit.ly D10 reception and go to breakout room one, our amazing mentoring lead, Chris Dark will be there and maybe he'll be in a scuba suit. I don't know, but you'll need to go to the reception and check in to find out. So what Chris is gonna do is he's gonna welcome you and try to figure out what your skills are, what you're interested in and what would be a good fit for you for contribution. Once they, you work with Chris to figure out where is a good spot, then we have breakout rooms on these different topics that we've covered. And it's gonna be me, Matt, Offer, Peter, Ben, David, Joel, and Jess. 
And the mentors are there to help you succeed. We want you to have a very positive contribution experience so that you'll contrib contribute in the future. So we oh, very much hope you will join us, make Drupal even more amazing. We talked about the reception. The reception is actually open for the entire four hour block. We have two Slack channels. We have a D10 readiness general channel and we have a CK editor five specific channel. For the issue queue, we are tagging any issues that we're working on at DrupalCon, this, this event with North America 2021. But for Drupal 10 readiness specific issues, we're using the tag Drupal 10 just by itself. And last but not least, we have a meeting um, that's ongoing every other Monday at 1800 U UTC. And it's in Slack and it's asynchronous. And what that means is actually the meeting is open for a 24 hour period for people to participate. So we hope you'll join us and uh, see you later today. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks uh, to my co-presenters and those that provided input for the session. We don't have time right now for Q&A, especially since we went five minutes over, but we have a dedicated Q&A session in uh, the Hopin Sessions area. So if you can move over there and then see us there and ask your questions. See you around and hope to see you on the contribution uh, space later today. Bye-bye, enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>